Hello and welcome to episode number four of getting started with Houdini attributes and bobs. And in this one, we'll be taking a look on how to create a setup that will be similar to this kind of uh, simple-ish motion graphics, but uh, we will not just, you know, animate some sort of lines. We will actually be looking at how do we convert vectors to flows. Uh, we convert flows to vector back again, so we can actually manipulate our geometry in, for example, just one axis. Then we will take a look at how to move the points around using uh, functions like sine. And I'll be showing you how to convert integers to floats. Why does it matter? And of course, overall, it will be resulting in this neat uh, setup. So let's learn how to do that and let's get started. Before I begin, I just wanted to say that um, if you're interested in supporting the channel, please consider subscribing to Patreon because it has all the SIN files and assets that are necessary to follow along. Of course, it's not mandatory, so if you don't feel like it, it's fine. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, don't forget to save because, you know, what if it crashes or lights go out or something like that? Uh, that'll be not be fun, of course. So anyway, create geometry and we start with line. Here we go. I will enable the visualization of points. And the line, as you can see, it kind of looks, uh, goes from bottom to top because the direction is, uh, goes in the vector of zero, one, zero, which means it looks up because the second is actually the y-axis. So if we do the direction zero, zero, one, it will look in the z-axis. All right, so let's actually increase the number of points so we have something to work with. And finally, Let's drop the attribute map and jump inside. As per usual, uh, we will be doing something with the positions of our points because, well, basically to create that sine wave that was animated, we have to somehow operate with the positions. So how do we do that? Now, the only position I personally want to animate is the position of the y-axis. So it kind of like goes like the classic sine, right? Whoops. <laughs> Uh, kind of like this and of course That means that the only position that we need to change is the Y so as you might have Remembered from the previous lessons. I usually talk about the vectors the flows and all that kind of stuff. However You will be interested to know that we actually can convert vectors to floats and back again so we do that exactly by typing vector to floats and here it is so the P is the position, which is X, Y, and Z. And it means that we can convert the vector into three different floats. Each of them corresponds into the X, Y, and Z. Now, as you can see, something gets broken because basically that's not enough information to feed back into our attribute fob output. So we have to convert the float to vector back. Here it is. If we connect value two and value three, you will see that everything now is in order. So now we want to actually tweak the Y for each point. And obviously it is the value two because it goes in X, Y, Z. Right, so we get the sine function. As you will see, a sine function gets the radians and it results in the sine. So how do we actually get some numbers from the points? Uh, the kind of like the most obvious way would be actually to get the numbers of the points, right? So as you can see, it goes from zero to 49. We have 50 points, of course. And each of this number we can get from the points number. As you can see, this uh, is the blue, which means it's an integer, which is basically used or counting, right? However, this one is a turquoise. It means it's a float. So we connect the integer point number here. You'll see that indeed we will actually have some results. So first let's add the value that we had before to the resulting sign. And the sum of this addition will fit back into our um, float to vector. And of course, we have uh, this result, which is not bad by any means. Uh, so we can actually control the, so to speak, severity, the amplitude of our addition by 
you guessed it right, by dividing it. Uh, let's say the divider will be something like this. You will see that we have some sort of uh, result already. So first, I will just increase the number of points from uh, 50 to 150, for example. You will see that we actually uh, have more frequency going on. This is because the length of our line did not increase. If I increase the length, well, obviously it becomes, you know, longer and the wave becomes longer as well. However, let's actually work, for example, length of three. Get inside, I will disable the visualization of numbers and just enable the visualization of the points. So how do we actually make Houdini understand that we do not need um, so many waves inside of our sign function? That will be achieved if we actually somehow divided the point number by some other number so that we have less of those waves going on. So I will divide by constant. However, you'll see we have some sort of a warning because we it says implicit cast from flowing float to integer. What this means is that we are dividing the integers by the float as you can see, the result is <laughs> kind of weird. Uh, so we can actually convert integer to float. And you will see immediately we have an improvement. Of course, if we divide it even more, obviously we're now having uh, the thing that we want, right? So here it is. And of course, we now can obviously animate that already. So to animate this, um, I think the easiest way to be actually adding another constant here. So if we now add something here, you will see that our sign becomes animated. Now, uh, previously we had a little bit more variation going inside of our uh, wave. So how do we do that? Well, it's relatively easy actually. We need to get all of this, hold down the Alt, move here and we add the new parameters, like different divisions, different offsets, and all that kind of stuff, back to our setup, like this. As you can see, we now have pretty much uh, double the amplitude because the numbers here are the same. However, if we start to tweak uh, the dividers like this, you will see that we are now animating uh, the second wave, which has a little bit more going on. I'll actually create another copy of this and put it to here. Um, in this one, I will divide it even a little bit more so we can animate it as well. However, um, I think we actually can divide it somewhat less so we have a little bit more repetition of our wave, but uh, to make it not affect as much our animation. The result that we have after the sign function, we can divide by constant. You will see what I mean in a second. If we increase the divider, the amplitude, the amplitude of our third wave that affects it becomes less pronounced. Of course, we, if we divide it uh, less than one, it will be more pronounced. If we divide it more than one, it will be less pronounced. And basically, if we, here, here it is, if we do the offset like this, if we promote this, so if we actually um, do the addition like this, you'll see in a second, and uh, if we promote this parameter, right, we will have actually a parameter that we can animate. Here it is. So as per usual, I can just write dollar $t, oops, uh, press play, and here it is. It's being animated and everything looking pretty good. Of course, if you can uh, divide it by five, so it can is it, it is animated a little bit slower. By two, I think we'll be doing just fine. So, as per usual, we can do the copy and transform. I will translate by point one in the x-axis uh, to like kind of like this. Polywire, subdivide, normal. Everything as per usual here. The polar wire is 0 0.01 and subdivision, I think, 
2 will do just fine. Disable the visualization of the points. And here we go. Looking pretty good. So, you can, of course, uh, promote different parameters. So, for example, if you want to animate uh, the medium-sized wave, you can, of course, promote parameter here and animate that as well. So uh, if it's a medium size, I think we can divide it by, let's say three. So the medium waves go a little bit slower than the smaller waves. And of course, if we can animate, if we animate this, we will see that there is a little bit more motion going on. Of course, it's becoming a little bit slow because we subdivide, we pull your wire and subdivide two times. And of course, we recalculate normals afterwards. So to make the animation kind of like more real time, as you remember, we can hold down left mouse button, flip look with new settings, go to size, make it full HD uh, and press start. And the new window will pop up and we can preview our animation. If we enable this real time toggle, we can, of course, see our animation real time and I'll just play it forward and here it is in all its beauty so there you go that looks pretty neat um, of course you can do that for some sort of a motion graphics visualization like charts or whatever doesn't really matter you can use it for modeling of course or anything as, as you might already imagine the things that we learn in the attribute vops like this it will help you with anything you want. You can do like um, basic modeling or basic animation or basic whatever, or advanced if you are <laughs> into advanced stuff, of course. So anyway, uh, hopefully you learned uh, a little bit or a lot. It depends on how much you take in from the first view of the video. So we learned about converting vectors to floats, floats to vectors. Uh, we learned how to convert the integer to float, how we can actually feed the result into the sign function. We add that to the y-axis and have this visualization going on. And everything is absolutely tweakable and looking really, really fun and interesting. So there you go. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. Um, if you have ideas and suggestions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. If you're interested in more, don't forget to subscribe and hopefully you will have a nice day. I'm looking forward to seeing the next video. Have fun and bye-bye.